Okay, let's pick up where we left off talking about the evidence that may lead us to the understanding of what happened to the dinosaurs and why. At the end of the last podcast, we listed four pieces of evidence that we want to look at more closely. Write in your notes that the first thing discovered was an element in the KT boundary layer called iridium. That's only found in a few places, mainly asteroids and comets, which would be evidence of some kind of impact. Now let's take a look at this diagram and kind of get the lay of the land here. You see this iridium layer right here, but let's kind of get the general layout now of this KT boundary. So here's the tertiary sediments right up here. Here's the Cretaceous sediments right here. We're going to talk about this coal or soot layer right here pretty soon. And we're also going to talk about what microtectites are. Notice the tertiary sediment. Which of these sediment layers is oldest? If you said the Cretaceous sediments, you'd be correct by the law of superposition, right? Remember that the oldest layers now are on the bottom and the newest ones are on the top. And that fits with your geologic time scale that you have in your notes. Okay, so write in your notes that we are looking at the time period between the Cretaceous and Tertiary and that the layer you see here between them represents the time period from the Cretaceous to Tertiary. So this whole layer here, from here to here, is that Cretaceous Tertiary. And here's that boundary layer right here that we're talking about. Also write that the sediments represent the geologic history of the Earth between those time periods, meaning that the sediments can be analyzed and give clues to the conditions on the surface at the time. Okay, next write in your notes that this KT boundary also contains shocked quartz and tectites. You see the names right here. Shocked quartz and tectites. First, shocked quartz that you see here at the top of this slide. So here's regular quartz and here is shocked quartz. You can see the difference between the two. Now, write in your notes that these lines that you see, and I'm talking about these lines, they're called lamellae. Sorry about that uh, bell or buzzer or whatever that's called. Um, now, these lines that we're talking about, called lamellae, are from extremely high pressure and make shock quartz different from normal quartz. So you can see the difference between the two. Also get in your notes that outside of a laboratory, shock quartz only occurs in two environments. Craters made by nuclear bomb explosions and meteorite impact craters. Hmm. Interesting, right? Okay, now what about these microtectites that you see here, these microtectites? Write in your notes that geologically speaking, microtectites are formed when molten rock, you know what molten rock is, right? That's melted rock. When molten rock is ejected into the atmosphere, that would be by some kind of volcanic eruption or some kind of eruption, before touching the ground and cooling. And that volcanoes and meteors are sources of microtectites. Hmm. Interesting, right? However, psychically speaking, tectites are used for extraterrestrial communication, astral travel, and lucid dreaming. Hmm. Interesting, right? Yes, write that down too. The last of the most current geological evidence is the presence of a soot layer that you see right here. This black layer right here in the KT boundary is called a soot layer. Write in your notes that there's a large soot layer associated with the KT boundary and that this layer is consistent with massive catastrophic fires that may have swept the surface of the earth at this time. Also write 
that a fire this size would have killed most large terrestrial animals on the surface of the earth. One like you see right here, Mr. Tyrannosaurus Rex. Okay, now let's introduce the idea of a nuclear winter. Write in your notes that if a giant impact from a comet or asteroid did occur on Earth, it's theorized that the lingering airborne debris is believed to block out the sun and then trigger darkness and a decline in global temperature. And that would have wiped out the dinosaur's food source. Also write that the intense heat from this impact would have also burned all the vegetation on the surface of the earth and relieved, released a huge amount of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, intensifying the global warming effect. In effect, burning out the dinosaurs as well as starving them out over time. Make sure you get those two things in your notes. Okay, now let's look at more evidence that may lead to solving the mystery of what happened to the dinosaurs. First, let's, took, let's look inside the earth. We call this internal evidence. Let's talk about something called the Deccan Traps. Write in your notes that 65 million years ago, a series of huge volcanic eruptions occurred in what is India today. Also write that these eruptions happened near the end of the age of the dinosaurs between 67 million and 63 million years ago and created the mammoth Deccan traps that you see here in this slide. Now what the Deccan traps are are lava beds in India which originally may have covered as much as 580,000 square miles. That's roughly 1.5 million square kilometers, more than twice the area of Texas. Get that in your notes. Also write that the release of volcanic gases, particularly sulfur dioxide, during the formation of these traps contributed to, contemporary, to a temporary drop in temperature globally of two degrees. Rapid eruption of the vast Deccan Trap lava fields would have flooded the Earth's surface with carbon dioxide, triggering the rapid KT boundary transition greenhouse warming. Write in your notes that this may not seem like much, but geologists believe that that two degree change in temperature may have been enough gas and dust to cause a nuclear winter. And you know we just went over what a nuclear winter is. This is the kind of climate change that may have been enough to kill the dinosaurs. Again, we're still searching for what exactly killed them. But this is one of those uh, internal uh, theories that's out there. Okay, now what about the theory that somehow plate tectonics played a role in the mass extinction of the dinos? Let's explore this idea a bit further. Write in your notes that major changes in the organization of continental plates, remember we call that continental drift, were occurring at the KT boundary. Also write that the oceans, especially the interior seaway we call the St. Lawrence Seaway in North America, were experiencing a, a regression meaning they were receding from the land. Remember that the recession now is due to the lowering water level. A less mild climate would have been the result. This would have taken a long time. Now major plate activity is consistent with major volcanic activity. This lowering of the temperature globally also could have killed the dinosaurs over time. Okay, now let's look extraterrestrially, meaning places other than the Earth. Those are called extrinsic factors. Write in your notes that this side of the controversy holds that the ultimate cause of the KT extinction was external. 
meaning of an extraterrestrial nature, and catastrophic, meaning fairly sudden and punctuated. Also write that the main hypothesis was proposed in 1980 by, among others, Luis and Walter Alvarez. You see their picture right here. Luis and Walter Alvarez at the University of California at Berkeley. Now, you see a picture of them here at another area in California, the KT boundary. Question for you. Luis is on the left in this picture. Which boundary does he have his hand on? Walter's on the right. Which boundary does he have his hand on? If you said Luis is on the tertiary boundary and Walter on the Cretaceous boundary, you'd be correct by the law of superposition. Okay, so what is the Alvarez theory? Write in your notes that Al the Alvarez's theorized that a large extraterrestrial object collided with the Earth with its impact throwing up enough dust to cause the climatic change much like the impact of a nuclear weapon only bigger so you see this object near here on the left and you see now all of this debris now that would be thrown up by its impact now all of this debris then would make its way into the environment block out the sun and cause a nuclear winter write that in your notes Also, write that asteroids and similar extraterrestrial bodies are higher in iridium content than the Earth's crust. So they figured that this iridium layer that we see in the KT, KT boundary was composed of dust from the vaporized meteor. Write that down. Now, here's the problem no crater was found can you think of why so big object hits causes a nuclear winter um, extinction of all the dinosaur species but oops no crater again can you think of why well it was assumed that one existed that was about 65 million year, years old in a hundred kilometers 65 miles in diameter huh seems like that'd be easy to find hmm no crater huh interesting hmm no crater huh where in the world could that stinking thing be huh Okay, that's part two. Take a picture of those notes, send them to Moodle, grab that study guide, answer the questions, and I'll see you in part three where we try to unravel this mystery. Bye.